when we did the Galana project, uh, we also arranged, we tied the Israeli government, and we arranged finance of $80 million uh, dollar from Israeli bank, but also a grant of six years of training of hundreds of students from Kenya and Israel. And also we shift in order to ask for being sure that the people will get the capacity building, we shift the program that the student all will come to the most toughest and the, and the best place to learn proper agriculture, which is in Israel, in Arba Valley, and most of the students in our farm. So let me uh, call and introduce Dolin and Peter. They are graduated after 11 month program uh, in our farm in Arava Valley in Israel, which is one part of the concept of sending students to come to Israel to study and go back to Kenya and change the future of Kenya. Our guest of honor, Honorable Eugene Omalo, and all protocols observed. Good afternoon. My name is Doline, a beneficiary of ICAT internship program, and this is my story in the desert. On the 5th of August 2016, I was among the 102 students that went to Israel on an agricultural internship program. After three hours' drive from Tel Aviv, a team of eight students and I were dropped off at Green Arabas Zofar Farm, where we were to spend our next 11 months learning how to uh, grow uh, crops in the desert. I was delighted that this was the company behind the Kenya Gul Galana Kulalu Food Project. Surprisingly, there was nothing appealing about the place. I knew that this was going to be my home, working place and learning station for the next one year. Being in the middle of nowhere, in an extremely hot place, hundreds of miles away from home, broke my heart. We shared our new home with Thai workers who didn't understand English, posing a communication barrier. After two days of rest, we were set for work in the pepper farms at 5.30 a.m. in the morning when most of us here in Kenya are still sleep sleeping. Our transport was by tractors, taking at least four liters of water to keep hydrated, non-compromising supervisors, the Israeli supervisors, they're so military, uh, getting dirty and sweaty seemed too much of a bargain for a proud Kenyan graduate. Temperatures of above 47 degrees Celsius and up to 16 hour, hours of work in a day made me regret leaving my country. I called home, I called everybody at home and shared my sentiments. We carried out different activities in the farm from planting, weeding, stringing, pruning, picking, packing, um, field preparation, and net house repairs, etc. Ladies were not given any special treatment. We worked equally, both men and, and the ladies, in the field and in the packing house. The brighter side of this routine was attending classes once in a week, where we interacted with students from other countries and broke work monotony. We also took field trips around Israel to view holy places that you hear, you all read about in the Bible. They are true. Um, we rested on Sabbath. So we observed Sabbath on Saturdays. Unlike Kenya where we have two days a weekend, in Israel it's just one day. This was the routine for months. My limits were being stretched and they thought I could break. It was very difficult for me to adjust. Frustrated and angry with myself, the program, and everybody around me, I knew I had to change my attitude to last another day in the desert. One Saturday evening, while watching the sunset, I realized how incredible the Israelis are able to transform the desert. I said to myself, if they are able to transform nature, that is the desert, to produce so much from almost nothing, then I was no exception. Open your mind and brace yourself for transformation, girl. Be flexible, I said to myself. This was my turning point. The supervisors guided us through every step of the way. I got a whole new perspective about everything. I injected a little more passion into my routine work. 
I also made calls at home now, this time to assure them that I was doing great. I'm now doing great and I'm doing the program. I also learned to a little basic Hebrew and basic Thai because we used to work with the Thai and the Israelis. So I had to put more passion into my work. And how am I supposed to do this? Learn a little Hebrew, learn a little Thai, and then I can communicate with everybody in Israel. I also learned how to drive a tractor. <laughs> I enjoyed my work and I cherished my school days. At Green Arava, I learned that every problem has a solution and every problem presents an opportunity to learn. I learned the invaluable lesson on the true value of time and thinking long term. You had the way the doctor is talking in 20 years, in, you know, thinking long term. Green Arava stretched me to limits I, nev I could never imagine. I, pers I persevered through extreme temperatures of summer and winter in the desert because we are really freezing and thawing. And the hard work was worth because at the end of the year, I emerged a better person. I grew uh, culturally, emotionally, physically, intellectually, and socially an all-round African woman. I learned so much that I cannot manage to share all with the limited time given, but as I conclude, it is unfortunate there is no system in place to absorb these highly trained black Israelis, but Green Arava, but Green Arava is slowly changing this situation. They are posing a challenge to each and every one of us this urgent need to set our priorities right as a country. It's the high time everybody realized that they are part of the solution to the food insecurity situation in our country and Africa. The question you need to ask yourself is, from where I stand, am I doing enough? Will I let all these resources and opportunities slip through my, through my fingers right in front of me? I'm grateful to the government of Kenya, the Israeli government, ICAT, and Green Arava for having given me this opportunity. And food for thought, the real comfort is out of the comfort zone. Thank you.